Welcome to the Happy Bones, Happy Life podcast. I'm Margie Bissinger, a physical therapist and integrative health coach, and I am your host and guide on our journey to discover the keys to stronger bones, more happiness, and the secrets to live your best life ever. From nutrition to stress, from exercise to happiness, you will gain revolutionary insights from our leading experts. It is time for you to discover the health and happiness you deserve. Hey everyone, Margie here, and today you are in for a real treat. Our special guests, Dr. Jason and Mira Colton, are among the world's leading experts in osteoporosis, lifestyle medicine, and micronutrient deficiency. In today's episode, Mira shares her remarkable story of how she reversed advanced osteoporosis that she had at age 30. Yes, age 30. So get prepared for some amazing take-home tips to improve your bone health regarding your supplements, protein, omega-3s, and so much more. Welcome, Mira and Jason. I am so excited to have you today on the Bone Health Academy podcast. The two of you have done so much when it comes to bone health and osteoporosis, and you've just really improved the lives of people all over the world. So I'm absolutely thrilled to have you share your knowledge with us and enlighten us. And I know that you will change lives just from people listening today. So thank Any opportunity you so much. Any opportunity to talk about osteoporosis, and we are there. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's start with that. Why are you so laser focused, and why are you so passionate about osteoporosis? Well, um, when I was thirty, I was living in Manhattan, and I was a publicist. I had my own PR firm. I was like loving life. I was doing fashion and television, and everything was. I was living on top of the world, or so I thought. And then as I turned 30, I just started slowing down and I started to feel a lot of pain in my lower back and hips. And I just didn't feel like I had the energy that I used to have because I blamed it on other things. Like so many people out there do. You start to get these messages from your body and you say, oh, I shouldn't have gone out last night. That's why I'm tired. Or, oh, I wore too high heels the night before. That's why my back hurt all this next week. And so you start to blame it away. And what I found out when I turned 30 is I was diagnosed with advanced osteoporosis. So Can you imagine 30 years old, unbelievable. Old. And that's what they told me. And I was like, what do you, I mean, I don't know if I was more shocked or my doctor was more shocked or the specialists they sent me to were more shocked, but nobody could give me an answer as to why this would have happened. It's supposed to come with aging. And so they just said, the one thing they said to me is you can't take care of yourself anymore because I was practically bedridden by this point. So sell your company, leave town, have your family look after you, and you're not going to get better. Oh, you could take these medications. They did give me a list of medications, and I decided not to for myself, that that wasn't a road I wanted to go down. And I decided I wanted to do it naturally. And the only other thing I was told was calcium, which so many doctors just give you one word, calcium. And you're supposed to like know what to do with that. And so I started to look into calcium because there's gives you a lot of time on the bed to type away and do research. And uh, I found out that calcium was a mineral and that you needed it. And I found out there was a whole lot of other minerals that I might also need. And I got more and more confused and I couldn't do anything about it. So I found a doctor. I found a doctor that helped me to put together a micronutrient therapy program. And luckily in two years of focusing on my micronutrient absorption, we were able to go back and get a DEXA scan and I no longer have osteoporosis. That was, four, that was 15, 15 years, years ago <laughs> now. Um, so I've been cleared of osteoporosis and I'm passionate because if I can do it, there is nothing special about my case. If I can do it, you can do it. We've all taught, we've taught hundreds of women across the, you know, this country and thousands across the world to, to do the same program and they're all doing it, which is amazing news. It's totally, it's up to you. As long as you take ownership of it, you can change your health. I yeah. love this. First of all, we just have to tell our listeners, and who was that amazing doctor that you, that you found who helped you? That was me. That was me. <laughs> Um, I got more out of it than just the cure. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I love the silver linings in life. I, I'm just, I'm a big believer that life has its purpose and people meet each other and it takes something like this to, to find each other, number one, and then create all this good in the world. So 
Well, and, you know, I was just as shocked as all the other. <laughs> so I'm a PhD in, in <laughs> medicine. And so the medical doctors brought me in to kind of say, hey, we've tried everything we can try. Can you understand what's going on here? And maybe you can use micronutrient therapy, which Mira kind of talked about, and design a program. So we did do that. And you can imagine how excited <laughs> we were when we got the DEXA scan back and that she had, didn't even have osteopenia anymore. It was completely reversed. <laughs> and so what we decided to do is we said, there's something to this micronutrient stuff. What we discovered in those two years, which is what's in our books and what we teach and lecture and are so passionate about, really changed everything when it comes to osteoporosis and what we later learned with so many other health conditions. So what we did, something a little unconventional, you know, mirror. We're a little unconventional. We're a little unconventional. <laughs> I, so what but I think you, in this world you have to be. I really think that that's what we need to break out and to really figure out what's working. So this is great. Right. So we said, let's travel around the world and let's go to these remote tribes and let's try to understand why it is what they're doing what they have what what we've forgotten about diet and lifestyle why don't they get osteoporosis why don't they get diabetes why don't they get heart disease and why are we why is this so prevalent in our modern society so we did a seven year around four times around the world, 143 country expedition that we just did ourselves because we wanted to go and live and talk to these tribes before they disappeared on the planet. And what we learned from what we call, that was called the Colton Project. And what we learned from that project was that micronutrient deficiency is really one of the most prevalent and dangerous health conditions of the 21st century because almost every health condition from osteoporosis to diabetes to hypertension to heart disease, everything we mentioned really in scientific literature has its roots in some kind of micronutrient deficiency. So while we use one kind of pattern of micronutrients to help mirror reverse her osteoporosis, in our book, The Micronutrient Miracle, you'll see that we can use different patterns of different micronutrients to help people prevent and reverse other diseases. So that was one of the big kind of takeaways and why we're so passionate, especially about osteoporosis, because so many people know that it is a micronutrient deficiency. We don't have to kind of educate you that it's calcium and magnesium and K2 and all these different micronutrients. Your doctor does that for you. Now our work is to teach you how to take those things and become sufficient in them, which is absolutely not an easy thing to do. And we're gonna go over that in today's podcast. Great, great. Um, I happen to love this book. This is such a fabulous, fabulous book. But just something that I found really interesting about your story, which you talk about, is that when you did travel, because so many people think, oh, it's paleo, or oh, it's this type of diet, or that type of diet. But tell us what you found about that, because I found that, I think people find that interesting, because everybody, you know, people want to help themselves and they want to do everything they can. So if they hear that this diet worked or that diet worked, they want to go on that diet. But I think it's interesting what you found from examining all these cultures who didn't have osteoporosis and had really excellent health. What, what did you find about that? Yeah, you go to the mountain regions of Peru and like they're eating really high carb. So they get a lot of potatoes and starches and, and you know what? They don't have disease, these primitive cultures. And then you go down to the Sepik River down in Papua New Guinea and they're eating like all fish and a, a, you know, very little carb high, heavy carbohydrates and, and they don't have osteoporosis. And you start to look at all these different areas and you're like, you know what, there isn't one diet. What it comes down to is something much more innate which is how our ancestors would have chosen what to eat. They chose what to eat, what was there. They chose to eat what was fresh. They understood to change the farm every single time, the fields, so that they weren't overcropping things, so that everything came through nutrient dense. The water wasn't filtered, it came through rocks, and the rocks gave tons of minerals to you. I mean, it was really amazing. They all exercised regularly, but none of them went to the gym. They just did physical things around the, around the area that had to be done. And the other thing is they all had a sense of self. And we don't want to overlook how important it is to have a community. And that's what they all had. They all felt like they were a contributor to this community and the community took care of them. Yeah. And that's really something we're also missing in today's day and age. Yeah. Um, so I love all, that. 
ultimately what we found is that there is no one perfect diet. It's perfectly fine if you want to be a vegan or a vegetarian or a paleo or primal or low carb or low fat or any of these. These are these are dietary philosophies. And oftentimes these philosophies are almost kind of like religion to people. You know, somebody who is a paleo dieter, you try to tell them <laughs> they're doing something wrong and you know, you're, you're attacking their religion. And the same thing for vegans or what have you. But what it really boils down to is any of these diets, they all have pros and cons, but they all are deficient in essential micronutrients to some extent. And that's because all diets the only reason something is a diet is because it takes something out of it. If you really think about it, what, what is low carb taking out? Carbohydrate-based foods. Low fat, fat-based foods. Vegan, animal-based foods. <laughs> Paleo, legumes and dairy-based foods. They're all elimination diets in their own way. And when you eliminate any food group or any, any foods at all, you're also eliminating the micronutrients that naturally come with that. So we, as you know, we kind of, we believe in kind of coined a new term and it's called the nutrivore and nutrivores instead of being a vegan or a vegetarian or a paleo diet you can follow those dietary philosophies if you really focus on becoming micronutrient sufficient within the foods that you're allowed in your dietary philosophy so we don't want you to change being a vegan but know that there's no way you can get vitamin b12 from vegan based foods because it needs an animal source does. so you can supplement then and that's why supplementation is so important in our modern world. Because if we want to, you know, do these, these, these very, you know, narrowed. narrowed, focused diets, we have to understand that supplementation is going to be part of that process. I love this. Let's just go back a few steps, just in case some of the listeners don't totally know the difference between macronutrients versus micronutrients. Let's just go way back, just so everybody completely understands what a micronutrient is. Would that be okay? Hello? For sure. Oh, okay. so, <laughs> I'm sorry, I got to stop for a second. Yeah. A macronutrient is what we all normally hear about. That's that carb, fat, protein. So a low carb diet, a low fat diet, and it's all measurements of how much of your fats, your carbohydrates, and your proteins. They're called macronutrients because you have larger amounts of those. Micronutrients are what is key. Your food also delivers micronutrients needed in smaller quantities. That's why it says micro. And there are four families of them. They're your vitamins, your minerals, your essential fatty acids, and your amino acids. Now, all four of those groups you've already heard about, even if you're thinking, oh my God, I don't know what she's saying right now. So vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D, those things that you hear about in the news. Minerals, calcium, magnesium, so important for osteoporosis. Your amino acids, that's coming from your protein. So that's your, the building blocks of protein. And your essential fatty acids, that's that omega-3 that you probably hear about, or fish oil that you hear about in the news. So it's things that people already get, but they need to refocus on them. Because without all of them, the entire family of micronutrients, your body cannot function. It's not even that it can't function well. It physically cannot function. The vitamins and minerals and essential fatty acids and amino acids work as an orchestra. And every single instrument is needed to play their role in the music at the time that they're supposed to come into the melody. So if one of them is missing, you have a really horrible sounded symphony and it's never going to happen. No one's going to ever show up and buy tickets. What we need for it today is every single instrument has to be there playing and supporting each other and raising each, elevating each other up so that you get not only the heartbeat, your primary functions working in your body, but then also other things like the amazing skin that you have and, you know, a lot of energy. And these are all the, the toppers on the cake, but all, every single one is needed. And People think that not every micronutrient is needed for osteoporosis. And that's why in, new, in our new book, Leading Osteoporosis, we list every single micronutrient and scientific studies on how that one nutrient, if deficient, can leave you with osteoporosis. How oh, I love that. that. I can't wait. I know it's, it's still in a couple months and we will alert everybody when, yeah. when it comes out because that is going to be incredible. Because I, people, I think there's a few of them. Yeah, I think you make a really good point because today so many people find out they have osteoporosis and really all they're told about is calcium and vitamin D. And right. maybe, maybe they'll put magnesium in, but 
very rarely K2. I mean, it's, that's typically, and typically then they're taking too much calcium because they're not balancing that with the food. So that's what I see on a regular basis. I don't see this, and I love the analogy to the symphony. That's fantastic, because that, that's really what's happening. And so I think it's so important for everyone to realize that you need all of these nutrients in the right order. And I, I think that's really great. You have a great program though, that once you find out, so you find out, or once you realize, I guess, that micronutrients play such a huge role, what, 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 how does your program work, your steps? So, okay. So we have three basic steps that are designed specifically to help you become micronutrient sufficient in all of your essential micronutrients, like we said. And another important point about that symphony, just going back to that analogy for a second, one vitamin can't take the place of another. So if you're taking in, let's say, calcium and magnesium and vitamin D, that can't take place of B1 <laughs> or B5 that you're not taking in, right? When we say you need every single one in minimum quantities, you need to be sufficient in all of them. And that's why it's so important to hit it from a three-prong approach. So we want to get micronutrients in first and foremost from your food, because that's the most natural way that our bodies have adapted to being able to absorb and utilize vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, and amino acids, that group that we're going to keep calling micronutrients. So our goal is to teach you how to find the foods that you allow in your dietary philosophy that have the highest amount of micronutrients in them. And that can be things like things that we're becoming more aware of now over the last five to 10 years, things like pasture raised when we're looking at chickens or eggs, right? wild caught when we're looking at fish or, or seafood, or things like grass fed when we're looking at beef, organic when we're looking at produce. All of these things now have been proven, those terms have been proven to produce foods that have higher micronutrient values in them. So we're gonna wanna push you to those whenever we can. But we also wanna help you find foods that don't, that aren't overly processed, that don't necessarily, one of the things that we, saw when we went to these remote groups of tribes all over the world was the amount of time that they took to prepare their <laughs> foods. You know, foods in the past, you know, we prepared them in a different way. We didn't just grab them and stick them in the microwave, obviously no <laughs> microwaves, right? And, 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 just, and then just eat them up. Or you've got all these people like say, oh, we should just eat everything raw. And yes, there's digestive enzymes in raw foods that are just incredible. But lots of foods, lots and lots of foods. The cruciferous family being one of those groups of foods, things like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, should never be eaten raw because we know that we can't absorb the micronutrients from raw cruciferous vegetables. And they also contain something called anti-nutrients. Things that are naturally found in plant foods that are designed to be almost natural pesticides, right? A plant doesn't want to be eaten any more than an animal wants to be eaten. <laughs> and so, you know, we all kind of say, well, we don't want to eat animals, but we're fine with plants. Well, the plant's like, hey, I'm living too. And when <laughs> the bugs come on the leaves and eat the plant's leaf, there's natural, what's called anti-nutrients that kind of blow up the gut of the bug. Now, obviously bugs are really small and our guts are really big, but you eat enough of these foods and the wrong kinds of these foods not properly prepared over time. And that's what really causes all these gut issues that we're seeing now and these leaky guts coming from these anti-nutrients. So while we don't want to say there's any bad foods necessarily, we want to really guide you towards those foods that are going to give you the most micronutrients, but also don't contain any of these negative uh, anti-nutrients as well. So that's kind of the first approach we have, get as many of these micronutrient rich foods as possible. So that's the addition part. So that's the easy part. And actually that's the only part that all of these like apps, these apps drive me crazy. So you go and you have this app that tells you how much calcium you're taking in today. So that's the addition. It's just the food coming in. But it's not telling you if that food is absorbable because it has an anti-nutrient or if you're actually taking in that much calcium. So we kind of want people to be aware of the subtraction part. So you take in the vitamins and minerals, but then something called life happens and you lose micronutrients all through the day. And that's things like stress. Like, I mean, we all get stressed and 
you can't combat all of it. Even you go on vacation, this should be the happiest time of your life, but your room's not ready or something happens. So stress is normal and it happens, but people don't think about how that's affecting their um, osteoporosis. I mean, majorly causing calcium and magnesium to be depleted. Additionally, it causes all your B vitamins to go through so much faster. And that's going to cause you to have high homocysteine levels. And these are just, you know, there's so many different micronutrients. And that's what we want you to start thinking about is how does everyday things not just affect your mood and your spirit and your, you know, your overall being, but how is it affecting your micronutrient levels? So that's the filter we use for everything. So it's things like stress, reducing micronutrients, sunscreen, you get no vitamin D, micronutrients, exercise, you know, it could be a great thing and it can keep you healthy, but you better know that it's going to eat your micronutrients a lot faster, especially the harder you exert yourself. So you have to be able to make sure you make that up somehow. So there's lots of these different things that people don't really pay attention to. And then the biggest thing that we want people to pay attention to that I don't think any other book that I've read on osteoporosis ever gets into, but because your dietary doctrine is your belief system, we call it that as part of the lifestyle because it really is. I mean, you're paleo, you're probably going to uh, you know paleo club and you're probably going to go do CrossFit and this is probably going to be your life. Yeah, it's so, like a lifestyle. Yeah, so we call it part of your lifestyle. And one thing that regardless of which one you choose, vegan, paleo, low-carb, keto, intermittent fasting, I don't really care, whichever one you choose, there are two things that you absolutely have to focus on for osteoporosis that are not getting attention. Yeah. And that is your omega-3 levels and your level of protein intake. Yeah. And we really would like to drill those home a little bit because those are things that people have fear of and they don't really understand. And they play a huge role in whether or not you're going to build bone ever. Yeah. You know, I, I love that. I love, before you go on, a couple of things. Yeah. I would say probably 95%, at least, of the people I see have such high stress levels and they come in. And they want to know, okay, what exercises do I have to do? What foods do I have to eat? And they're, not, and they're completely stressed over this, not realizing that the stress is such a huge factor. And it's not that we don't all have stress, just like you said, but it's the resilience. It's to develop habits that you know, two people can be driving the car on the highway and one is ready about to kill themselves and the other person is just taking it all in. Well, and the cool thing is vitamins can actually help you do that. Vitamin C actually blunts cortisol output. That's that stress hormone. So I if love you that. feel stress, you don't get stressed. You don't have all of that micronutrient um, pouring out or leaching happening. Additionally, omega-3 has been shown. They did a really cool study where they took a whole bunch of college students and put them in an exam room and tried to freak them out. And they <laughs> tested their cortisol levels and all that, their stress and their levels. levels. And they were... They were just through the roof, totally stressed out. They brought the same group in, gave them full omega-3 supplementation beforehand, and none of them got stressed. Like they just sat there and were like, okay, cool. And with whatever the teacher was doing to them, same exact situations, but just like you said, it's learning how to men mentally take care of those situations with mental exercises, but then also becoming sufficient with physical, you know, bulletproof Absolutely. vesting. Absolutely. That's, yeah. I, I love that. But the other point that you made that's so important and is overlooked because most people really, the, I would say the majority of people, calcium, vitamin D, maybe they'll get magnesium, maybe K2, but they certainly aren't going into the protein and the omega. So I think, why don't you go into that a little more because people yeah. are protein deficient and a lot of people, it's gotten a bad rap. You don't want too much protein. So it's sort of like a Goldilocks position. You know, right. you don't want too much, but you have to have enough. So why don't you go into that a little bit? Yeah, do you want to do protein first? You go for yeah, protein, protein first and then I'll go over the you omega like three. Omega three. I like talking about okay, protein. Yeah. That's great. I love it. The two of you are fantastic. You like to each other here. <laughs> yeah, um, so protein is one of those things that they always say you can't have too much because you don't want an acidic environment. Okay. Studies have come out that say the exact opposite. So when your body breaks down your bone, your calcium is being leached from your bone, the matrix around the bone, which is made of a protein and collagen, it actually disintegrates. Now you can't just give it calcium and vitamin D and K and expect it to build back up. 
because what that is made up is protein. So the studies were done and they gave people supplementation with those other nutrients and D and, D and, D and calcium. calcium. I was actually, this one was, just, I think, just D and calcium yeah. in this study. It was D and calcium and no improvement. But they started to look at exactly, wait a minute, there was a group, small group of people in that, that actually completely improved within a, like a month period, bone growth, no calcium leaching. And they said, what are these people doing? And they looked at their diet and they were eating a lot more protein. So they found what the magic number is. And this is what we want you all to know about, because this is what you have to pay attention to. Stop being afraid of protein. Get it in your head that your body needs the protein. Protein, it's part, amino acids, one fourth of that micronutrient family. You got your amino acids are required by your body, not only to give you muscle to support those bones, but to build the bone itself. And the number is 0 0.545. 0 0.545 times your body weight in pounds. And that's a daily number. So if you weigh 130, to multiply it by 0.545, and you get 71 grams. You divide that by four meals a day if you eat four, and you have 18 grams per meal of protein that you're supposed to have a day. That on top of your no, supplement, each meal. each meal, sorry. So it's 71 grams a day, 18 per meal. And when you look at that, plus your supplementation, that they have proven is the fastest bone building ratio. It, you absolutely will not build it without it. So stop being afraid of it. Protein is a requirement. And like I said, it's not just your bones that need it to be, be rebuilt, but it's also the muscle that needs to support those bones. As they're getting more frail, your muscle becomes more important. Right. And I'll just say one thing about that, too, because a lot of people say, hey, but there's also research studies that show that the more protein you have, the more calcium is secreted through your urine. And what, again, that's been looked at by scientists. And they said, yes, you secrete more calcium through your urine, but you're also absorbing a lot more calcium with, because of adding that extra protein. So it balances itself out. Another reason why we don't want to just look at one point of view on things. We really have to stand back with osteoporosis and realize that it's, just, it's so many different things kind of happening all at once. And like what Mira said, without that protein in your diet, you are not going to be able to build and maintain your bones and those vital uh, muscles and cartilage that you're gonna need to support those. So that's the protein part that really very few people are talking about. The other kind of, I would say, you know, big surprise when it comes to new research with osteoporosis is the omega-3, omega-6 ratio. We've all kind of heard about taking fish oil and getting omega-3 or maybe flaxseed oil and getting enough omega-3 but people don't really focus so much on the ratio of how much omega-6 we take in per day compared to how much omega-3 we take in per day. First, we don't know how much we're taking in, we don't know what ratio we should be doing, and we don't know what ratio we should be trying to reach. So let's start with what, what's happening in America with the ratios. Can I ask you a question? Can yeah. you, for, for the people who don't know, not everybody knows the difference, like what's omega-3, what's omega-6 so for our listeners who don't let's start with the very basics why what the difference is like what's a that's important yeah thank you <laughs> so omega-3 and omega-6 are your two essential fatty acids we hear about efas or essential fatty acids there's only two omega-3 and omega-6 talking about you know talking in broad strokes omega-3 is an anti-inflammatory essential fatty acid and omega-6 is a pro-inflammatory essential fatty acid. Now, people oftentimes think inflammation equals disease, and it does in too high a quantity, but our bodies actually need both. It's like yin and yang. We need inflammation and we need anti-inflammation, but we don't want either one in too much, and that's where that ratio comes in. Our ancestors you brought, had a typical one to one ratio of inflammation and anti-inflammation of omega-6 and omega-3. And that's how our bodies were, are used to, to understanding, ingesting, and utilizing omega-3 and omega-6. That's the magic ratio, one to one. Our normal diets today in America are 16 to one to 23 to one, right? That's Lots of, that. <laughs> so 16 to one to 23 to one, that, just omega-6 to omega-3, lots more omega-6, lots more inflammation 
causing omega-6s than the anti-inflammatory omega-3, causing lots and lots of this inflammation. And if, if you also imagine it like, so imagine you have 23 football players running down at this poor one guy who's omega-3. There is no way omega-3 is going to get to fight that inflammation. <laughs> I'm sorry. He is so outnumbered. So we have to keep that in mind. And omega-3 blocks omega-6. Omega-6 can block omega-3 from being absorbed. So when you have this much omega-6, there is no way any of that's getting through. Yeah. So let's talk numbers because sometimes it's easier to understand when we really put numbers to a ratio like that because 23 to 1 or 16 to 1 what does that mean it doesn't sound so hard if i just took some fish oil pills or i ate some foods high in omega-3 i should be able to balance that pretty easily with my diet so let's take a look at what a 20 what a, what a 16 to 1 ratio of a typical dieter eating maybe 25 maybe 1500 calories a day would equal and when we put numbers on it it's about 40,000 milligrams of omega-6 to 2,500 milligrams <laughs> of omega-3. Right? Those so sounds let's not really get too confused. 40,000 to 2,500. And when we think about a fish oil pill, because people are pretty familiar with one of those fish oil capsules, there's 1,000 milligrams of omega-3 in one of those. So if we were to say, okay. One. In a good one. <laughs> so if we have 2,500 omega-3 and 40,000 of the omega-6, once we subtract the omega-3 from the omega-6, we're left with 37,500 extra omega-6 <laughs> that we have to come up to, right? We have to eat 37,500 <laughs> milligrams of omega-3. That's 38 fish oil pills a day. No one's doing that. This is to give you an idea. Like people are like, oh, I'm sure my fish oil pill is going to take care of that. No. 38 no. a day. For every so, tablespoon of, of olive oil, what is that, 7,000? Every tablespoon of olive oil, you need one fish oil pill every single time. So when the person is saying, oh, I'm having a salad and I put maybe two or three or four tablespoons of my salad dressing made from olive oil, that's two or three or four <laughs> fish oil pills in that one meal. And Just forget that. about anything else you're putting on it. And so, God forbid it has egg or bacon or chicken or anything in that salad. Yeah. So we're just going to keep going down. So our goal is to teach you how to create that ratio. And we can go into that for days. But let's talk about why we need, we want that ratio. What does omega-6 and omega-3 do to our bones specifically? Not just inflammation in general, which is just bad overall, but specifically to our bones. Omega-6 also is the essential fatty acid that literally triggers the response and activates osteo osteoclasts. Osteoclasts, remember, are the cells in our bones that break down bone. The more inflammation or omega-6 we have, the more we're going to break our bone down. Remember, osteoporosis is just a, a, a ratio of two things happening. More bone breaking down than you have building up more osteoclast activity, activity rather than osteoblasts, the, the cell that build bone. And that's really what osteoporosis is. The whole idea of whether you're taking drugs or medication or using micronutrient therapy is to get a balance in the osteoclast and osteoblast and, blast, and at the beginning, probably more osteoblast <laughs> for, you know, form, bone formation so that we can raise up that, that bone density. And so imagine a diet that's 16 to one or, th or 25 to one in omega-6, you're getting all this bone breakdown activity. Now, what does omega-3 do? You might say, obviously omega-3 builds bone, but it does more than that. Not only does it impede the osteoclast happening, it, it stops or slows down the, the, the loss of bone, but it actually does something. It tells your stem cells in your bone, your stem cell in your bone has two options. It can either turn into an osteoblast, a cell that helps to build your bone, or it can turn into a fat cell. <laughs> Fun! These are, this is the connection between osteoporosis and obesity, right? So we, sometimes we wonder, like, really? That's the choice? Bone building <laughs> cell or a fat cell? That's the choice. And the only thing in your body that determines that is omega-3, specifically two family units of omega-3 or components of omega-3, EPA and DHA. So if somebody listening now says, okay, my goal is to get more omega-3 than omega-6 or at least equal amounts. I really got to boost it up. But we want to be careful, all right, because it gets a little bit more complicated. Let's now start focusing and understanding <laughs> 
omega-3 in general. Two families of omega-3, a plant-based omega-3, animal-based omega-3. And we don't want to say animal so much anymore because we'll include algae in this area as well, because algae is actually more of an animal than a plant, but let's We'll call it over here. A typical flaxseed oil or, or hemp seed oil or chia seed oil, a plant-based omega-3, is going to have something called ALA in it. This is a form of omega-3 that has to convert into EPA and DHA. The component you need to make your bone healthy. So it has a process first. These algae or animal-based, like fish oil or krill oil or algae oil, already contain EPA and DHA. That's important because those are the two factors you need to build bone, not the ALA. Now, people say, well, you, as you said, I can just convert my ALA into EPA and DHA in my body. And it's true, the body does that, but it does it at a very poor rate. And as you are more and more micronutrient deficient, and as you have higher and higher amounts of omega-6 in your body, omega-6 and omega-3, first of all, compete with each other, so like Mira said, 23 of those players on the football field against one, chances are the one's not even going to get through. But let's assume it did get through. Let's say they had a really big hole of defense. Yeah. <laughs> then then your omega, you have to, the, the fact of the being able to elongate from ALA to EPA and eventually to DHA is a very difficult process. In fact, almost doesn't even happen. Women do it better than men. Yeah. But- it's, it's, it's a process that's almost impossible. Think about, you have to take in 38 fish oil pills, and we use fish oil because it already contained EPA and DHA, okay. just to reach that ratio. If you were gonna be taking in flaxseed oil, you'd have to take in hundreds. So we know that the information we're giving you can get really technical and stuff, yeah. but in the new book, we actually break it down to 40 healing habits. Yes. We give you 40 things that you can do now. And we also go back and forth between the science and sort of like the storytelling, <laughs> because I know that a lot of people can get really overwhelmed like I did really early on. And so we want you to understand the science, but it's not just one. It's like, don't just do the omega-3 thing. I mean, that's great. And or it's gonna the help. Thing. And it's gonna, the protein's gonna help, and the omega-3 thing's gonna help, and not eating sugar's gonna help. But it's when you layer your body, like we said before, it's this orchestra, Every single thing needs to be happening at the same time. And that's what we want people to understand is try to do as many of these things that you can do every single day so that you can create this environment where healing is, is, not, is, is a priority. Right. Where your body has no choice but to say, hey, I got omega-3, forget that fat cell, I'm making osteo, osteoblasts. Like, you want your body to keep getting that same message by as many different messengers as it can. Right. So that's why we try to make it really simple. Yeah, I, I love this. Before I, we, we could talk for so long, but I, these are such important. I, know I could be on with hours with you. Uh, the, there are such important points about the protein and the fish oil and the and the um, omega is so important. But one other thing that I think you talk about that I don't really know who else talks about it that I just and I think the listeners will really appreciate the combination that the people do things with their supplements. And I know a lot of us do these that are really make them less effective. So you want to just tell us a few of the common things that you've found. And if I know, I know if people are taking calcium, K2 and, and calcium, K2, and magnesium together, I know that there's some ways to take that properly so that it gets maximally absorbed. You want to just fill us in because no, not something that people usually talk about. Right. So we talk in the book and in the new book, in, 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 in uh, Mike Nutri Miracle. Miracle, and we actually have a website that somebody can go to, too, if they want to learn more about this. We call it the ABCs because there's basically four you things can link it later. <laughs> that, we, that we found were wrong or were just outdated in typical, in, in, in supplementation today. So there's, there, there's actually four points. We'll just go over them very briefly because they're all kind of important. Why don't you go over A and B? A stands for absorption. So if you can't absorb your micronutrients in the multivitamin or in the supplement you're taking, you just wasted your money. Because it's not the fact that you put it in your mouth, it's whether or not your body is absorbing the micronutrients. So liquid is better than capsules. If you're looking for a capsule, make sure it's a capsule that's been tested for disintegration. We go into lots of different things like that. Additionally, it's what else is in that? So binders, fillers, inhibit absorption. And don't put like, 
those chocolate chewy things that people take for calcium, why you would put a whole bunch of sugar on top of calcium, because calcium is blocked by sugar, <laughs> so absorption. the absorption of it. So like that's a no-no. So make sure your things aren't like a, just a bigger sugar-coated candy that has like a couple ingredients in it. That's not gonna absorb, so that's absorption. Second is B, that's beneficial quantities and beneficial forms. We wanna make sure that your multivitamin contains beneficial um, quantities of everything, not just hitting and missing because you heard there's a magic pill over here. We want A to Z, we want you to be sufficient because like we said, they work together. And beneficial forms, pay attention because not every form absorbs well or can be utilized by your body. There's bioactive forms, there's synthetic forms. And it's really someone taking the time to look at which the forms are that they should be finding in their supplements and making sure that they're getting what they paid for. Because a lot of these companies, you know, they're charging you Porsche prices and they're giving you a Yugo. So it's really important that you understand and start to look at forms. Yeah, what you're talking about and what- the cool Yeah, <laughs> which I think is the big game changer when it comes to supplemental science. And it's not, so way back, back, long time ago, 15 years ago, almost 17 years ago now, when I first started working with Mira, um, there was kind of a, a talking about in the supplemental world of something called micronutrient antagonisms. That's kind of how, it, how you find it in the, in the published research. Certain minerals, it started with minerals. Uh, they, they realized that certain minerals competed with each other for absorption pathways in your gastrointestinal tract. So they were trying to come up with ways to figure out like, well, we don't want to put the two minerals that compete with each other in the same pill. Which ones are they? And how do we get around that? And so there were a few scientists out there that were starting to look at this. And I caught wind of that research early in my career. And when I was introduced to Mira, I said, well, let's start with that because we've got a mineral absorption problem here. They've realized that the regular multivitamin probably wouldn't work because they usually combine all the minerals together. So, so he forced me to take every single vitamin, every single mineral at different times throughout the entire day. Right. <laughs> well, it was, it was like four or five capsules before breakfast, four or five after, was, four or five before lunch. It was literally, I think we figured ridiculous. that over a year it was 10,000 capsules over a period of a year. And so you can imagine that that wasn't the way we wanted to go, but with, that was the beginning of the research. What we want the listeners to understand is that what we found is it's not just minerals. All the micronutrients in some form or another compete with each other. Today we call it micronutrient competition. And it's not just minerals, it's vitamins too. And that's really where our field of research uh, took off from and where we are today. We hold the patent in the United States for something called anti-competition technology. That is the technology, once we mapped out all the competitions that could take place between all vitamins and minerals, we then created a formula so that we didn't have to, the way that most vitamin companies deal with these competitions is they what's called chelate the minerals. There's one company that holds all the patents for That'll the chelated minerals. And so these companies say, well, let's use that. What they do is they take the mineral and they bind it to an amino acid so it goes through a different Re absorption pathway. It's their kind of technical way to get around it. We said, what about a no more natural way? If we know the two that are competing, why don't we just separate them into two different <laughs> formulas, leaving them in their natural form? It's kind of like two fighting kids, right? We can yell at those kids all day long and say, stop fighting. But if we separate them into two separate rooms, they can't fight naturally. And and where bones are concerned, that's really, it's, you know, the, the listener right now who has osteoporosis, who goes to the store and grabs a bone building supplement is going to see one thing, calcium, magnesium, K2, and D. Same things every single time in all of these formulas. And that is hugely problematic because right there, we have this competition craziness. Your calcium and your magnesium are going to compete with each other. You don't want them taken together if your goal is to absorb them. And your K2 and your D are going to fight against each other. So those need to be separated. And then on top of that, this year, it was just determined that K2, if put in a formula with either calcium or magnesium, would degrade. So within a year, your K2 would Less not be that. there. I mean, completely gone in a completely year. Completely gone and in a year. And this is critical. This is so important for this audience because 
we're spending a lot of money, they're good supplements, but yet if they're not giving us, how upsetting that we're working hard, we're, being, we're really being diligent, we're taking these supplements, and we may not be getting the results that we want. So I just have a question. Is it, because sometimes they're in the same pill, what about the person that's taking a calcium pill, a magnesium pill, a K2 all separate? Is that as problematic if it's taken at the same time? The, the competitions happen four different ways. So there's one that occurs in formulation, and that, that would be the example would be the K2 with the calcium magnesium. If those are in the same pill, that's when the problem's occurring. Right. So separating that would work. Yes. Now, the calcium and magnesium have a different type of comp competition. So that's going to be for receptor sites. So you shouldn't take those at the same time, even if they're separated. Right. So there's four different ways. So it, it, it's a complicated science. Go sure. over at least, that. That's good. At least we give people what I, I just want to give people takeaways. So when they're now that I don't want them to leave here. Oh, my goodness. What am I going to do? So no, there's this is on our website and you can share more information about how they can Absolutely. find it. Absolutely. And you have some wonderful, you have some wonderful products that put it all in drinks and they taste good. So I wasn't going to take it like that every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so I like, see people like that too, who, yeah. you know, there's no way they're going to take, but they'll do the drink. So it's really, yeah. it's really, so we could go on for so much longer and I'd love yeah. to so much information, but I'm going to give everybody all the links, to all your wonderful things. And you also have a quiz so that people know if they're micronutrient deficient. You have a quiz and there's ways to test. So there's a lot more involved here, but just to alert people about the micronutrients and there's some takeaways with the protein and the omegas that people can put to use right away. And I think also not to be focused on a certain diet. I think that was so important to enlighten us to this. So is there anything else you want to tell this community? Well, I just want to, I want, just before we leave, because we talk so much about the omega-3 and the omega-6, I just want to give just a warning out there, because a lot of times people think they're told to eat nuts and seeds. Oh, this is a great And I that. really want you guys to be careful with nuts and seeds, because nuts and seeds are where we find omega-6. Okay, so omega-6, super high in nuts and seeds. For an example, we're talking about, remember we talked about that 40,000 milligrams of omega-6 in a whole day on a typical diet? Just 3.5 ounces of sunflower seeds have about 27,000 milligrams of omega-6. So <laughs> we're always told, oh, eat these. But this is the, one of the worst foods you can eat for osteoporosis. Not only does it have five anti-nutrients, it's also super high in omega-6. So that's a great take home. And I'll do my little take home tip, which is just, you know, you got this, you got this. Like allow yourself to get it. And also, you know, stop blaming it on the doctor. Stop blaming it on everyone else. Stop blaming it on your genetics and start to really look at it and say, if I want to cure this, it's up to me. And then really start, I mean, you're listening to this right now, so obviously you care. You know, the person is listening. They're trying to get the information. So don't just let the information go in one ear and out the other. Start to put to practice the tips that all these, uh, you know, specialists are giving to you. Because it's, it's, you know, that's what it is. It's a gift. It's a gift to you to help you put together a program where you can cure your own body. And it's totally doable. It is. And that's what I love, that you did it. And other people, I see this all the time, people people can help themselves and reduce and significantly improve their bone density. And it's, it's great. It's, it's that it is doable. If you put all the pieces and it takes all the pieces, like you said, it's the lifestyle, it's the food, it's the exercise, it's all the pieces yep. and these micronutrients. So it's a huge part. And I just can't thank the two of you enough for bringing this out in the open and all the work you've done. You've done so much work and their book. I mean, this book is, I love this book. I got this right, right when it came out. And there's a quiz in here too. I love the quiz in the, this book that tells you about what you might be deficient in. It's great. Yep. So it, it's really a great book. And we'll have links to everything and all the, all the information. But I just can't thank you enough for enlightening us for so much information and for all the wonderful work that you're doing in this world to really put an end to osteoporosis. It doesn't have to be something that continues. <laughs> That's our goal this year is to get, you know, when the book comes I'm, out. I'm in there with you and great okay. to write the book. I, I cannot wait to, to see this book and I'm really, 
really, and I'll have information for everybody once it comes out as well, because, or even awesome. if there's pre-orders, that would be great too. We'll let you know as soon as we hear. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for spending the time. I really enjoyed this. And as I said, I'd like a couple more hours. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for all you're much. doing. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed today's interview as much as I have and have some great take home tips. But micronutrient deficiency is a huge topic and we only scratch the surface. But the good news is the Cultons have a lot of additional information for you. And this will all be in the show notes. They're linked to their new book, as well as even how you can get tested for micronutrient deficiency. So all of that is in the show notes. And thank you so much for joining in. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Happy Bones, Happy Life podcast. If you enjoyed this show, please subscribe on your favorite listening app so that you don't miss any amazing insights on upcoming episodes. And until next time, continue to live your best life ever. See you soon.